What's going on guys? Pistol Pack and Pilot back with another video. We're talking about calibers today. Caliber craziness. Here we go. Should you choose just one? Should you streamline your ammunition down to just one caliber? Stay tuned. let's just jump right into this. Everybody gets so hung up on calibers, but is it necessary to streamline your ammunition down to just one caliber? Well, let's examine this. What are the advantages to streamlining your stack of ammunition? I mean, obviously simplicity. You can stack it. It's one simple caliber of handgun ammunition that you need to buy and stack. So if you're considering streamlining your ammunition, obviously commonality and price point is going to play a huge factor when determining what caliber you should streamline down to. Now, let me preface this video by telling you, I have not streamlined my ammunition down to just one caliber. I have, however, streamlined away from several other calibers. Right next to my Glock 29 10 millimeter, you will find a couple of rounds. You'll find from left to right, a 380 ACP, a nine millimeter, a 357 Magnum, a 10 millimeter, and a 45 Auto. I do not have a 40 Smith & Wesson because, well, friends, don't let friends own 40 Smith & Wessons. Ugh. Brother, ugh. what's that? What's that, brother? In all seriousness, there's no point to it. The advancements of 9mm ammunition are just as effective as a 40 caliber round. So why would you have a 40 caliber handgun that limits your magazine capacity, cost more money, and is not as common to find. I'm stupid, you're smart. All right, as long as you're willing to admit that. Furthermore, caliber is really not that important anyways, because shot placement is important. With any one of these five rounds you see in front of you right now, a well-placed round to the tee box is an instant lights out. Any of these five rounds are fully capable of doing so. In fact, I made a video on just that, and it was my highest viewed video of all time. I will try to remember to link that video down there below in the vid video description. It is a nine millimeter versus 45 ACP video but I dive into other aspects of people getting caught up on all of this caliber craziness. But I digress. Let's start with the 380 Auto. Incredibly tiny, they're like really, really tiny little girl balls. What are some of the advantages of streamlining your stack into a plethora of 380 Auto cartridges? So the 380, does, believe it or not, have a few advantages. Most 380 pistols are smaller pistols, so they're more concealable. They're lighter. People that have a gun that's comfortable to carry are more likely to carry it. And the 380 definitely fits that bill. In addition to that, the 380 usually has less recoil. For shooters that have less hand strength, maybe some elderly individuals, maybe some women. 380 handgun might be a good fit for them. But the 380 generally cost more money than other calibers out there that are just as, if not more effective than the 380 auto. So should you choose to streamline down to one caliber, barring one of the reasons that I've already mentioned, I probably would not 
choose a 380. Moving on, we have the nine millimeter, the second round from the left. Nine millimeter ammunition is effective. Nine millimeter ammunition is cheap. Nine millimeter ammunition is probably the most common ammunition in the United States, readily available, very easy to find. Nine millimeter also is not traditionally known for a whole lot of over penetration. So if, God forbid, you're involved in a self-defense shooting, remember one of the rules of gun safety, you are responsible for that round until it comes to a stop. So everything is your responsibility, including an innocent bystander that may also be shot with the same round after it passes through the bad guy. And we all know what's attached to every single bullet. Say it with me. Uh, everything that guy just says is bullshit. Thank you. A lawyer. That's correct. Round in the middle is the 357 Magnum. 357 Magnum is a hot, snappy, very effective caliber. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Well, we already talked about some of the advantages. Very, very capable of stopping any two-legged threat in North America. But the disadvantages, there's quite a few of them. First of all, a 357 Magnum is a revolver round. It's a wheel gun. So we're talking six, maybe seven round capacity tops. So you're going to sacrifice a little bit of capacity. 357 Magnum is a hot, hot round. So you have to be concerned, very concerned actually, about over penetration. And it's also, like I said, snappy. It's going to have a little recoil. So remember, the best gun that you can carry is the one that you shoot well. If you shoot a 357 Magnum, better than any other firearm that you, than you own, then by all means, stack 357 Magnum. Just be aware of what the drawbacks are. Capacity, recoil, potential over penetration, and the price, not a cheap caliber. As I said, I don't own a 40 Smith & Wesson handgun because friends don't let friends own 40 Smith & Wesson, so I do not have a 40 Smith & Wesson round to show you. Hallelujah. But the second round from the last, the second round from the right is a 10 millimeter. I don't understand why someone would choose a 40 Smith & Wesson over a 10 millimeter, but that's just me. I think the 10 millimeter is a phenomenal firearm for not only your two-legged predators, but also your four-legged predators. If you're going into the mountains and you're worried about coming up on a bear, a 10 millimeter could be an effective round for bear defense. 10 millimeter, yes, you have to worry about over penetration. So if you carry a 10 millimeter, be very careful with that. In the woods, over penetration is not usually that big of a deal. In a crowded restaurant with armed robbers walking in, over penetration becomes a very big deal. So when you're choosing calibers, in particular calibers to streamline your stack into, choose calibers that will fit the type of scenarios that, God forbid, you could potentially find yourself in. The 10 millimeter may or may not be right for you. I do not carry this 10 millimeter in and around town because generally in an urban setting, I don't think it is my best choice. We'll get to what I carry in a minute. Finally, the last round on the right, the 45 auto, commonly referred to as the Lord's caliber. God created man, but Samuel Colt made them equal. 45 auto, very effective round, but it's got some of the same drawbacks as the 10 millimeter in terms of price. It's not cheap. 45 auto is significantly more expensive than some of the other choices out there. It also has more recoil. Over penetration though, however, is generally not an issue with the 45 auto. So 
reducing over penetration is a huge advantage with the 45 auto because folks sometimes fat and slow is good enough to get the job done shot placement with any caliber is key you may have put a round right through somebody's heart but it's going to take them 30 seconds 45 seconds maybe 60 seconds or even a little longer to bleed out depending on exactly where that round hit so you will go you will have a dead man fighting he or she is not very happy that you just shot them and they are still going to try to kill you and they are going to fight you to the death because they're already dead they might as well take you with them i am a huge proponent of if you're going to pull out your firearm it's for the purpose of doing one thing and one thing only, stopping a deadly threat. And the most effective way to stop a deadly threat is a well-placed round right into the tee box. Now let's get to which one would you choose to streamline your stack of ammunition into. So pick me. Choose me. Now I do own some 380s so i have a fair amount of 380 ammo but not much i do have of course this one 10 millimeter that's the only 10 millimeter i own so i have some 10 millimeter but not a tremendous amount uh i have a fair amount of 45 auto ammunition i own one 357 magnum so i have a very small amount of 357 magnum ammunition and, you know, speaking of 357s, the 357 SIG can't be look, overlooked either. But much like the 357 Magnum, same issues. Potential overpenetration, snappy, lots of recoil, and expensive. So the amount of handgun ammunition that I own in 9mm is... Don't know. I haven't counted it. I'm not sure I'd be capable of counting it. Yes, I am a 9mm fanboy. It's cheap. It doesn't have a tremendous amount of recoil. It's very common. It's readily available. Adequate penetration without too high of a risk of overpenetration. And magazines that are capable of a very adequate capacity based on the size of that round. Because remember, with guns, guys, and ammunition, everything's a trade-off, right? So I think the 9mm is a nice median. It kind of gives you the best of all worlds more than any other caliber, in my opinion. As I said, I haven't completely streamlined everything, but I'd say probably about 90% of all of my handgun ammunition is 9mm. Thank you so much for watching this video. I am the Pistol Packing Pilot, and I am out. See ya!